Hey, it's Dave here from the Resurrection Center to help you along in your day. My prayer is that a few words that I share with you today from the Holy Spirit touch the hearts of many. Let your heart be open and receive from the Holy Spirit. May you receive the revelation from God from what is about to be spoken. May your spiritual ears be awakened and hear what God has to say. I pray this in Jesus' name. Allow me to be obedient to God's purpose. As an ambassador professor to the nations, I have the opportunity to see firsthand the attack on the Christian community and the attack on the Christian body of Christ. Without being graphic, let's just say we are seeing signs of the end times. For a moment, let's just leave it there. I know it can be discouraging. At times of weakness, I felt the same way. But God picks me up and pushes me back into the battle because that is the purpose he has for me in my position. Sometimes we may feel alone in our Christian faith as the global community squeezes in and very often against us. The news on television makes us feel less prominent in our Christian culture and weakens our faith. Again, it's the signs of the end times. Thousands of years ago, it was known this was to happen today because it happened in the past. God will do something to put his children back on top. It could be a catastrophic event to bring people together. It could be a revival to bring people together. It could be anything to bring people together. Either way, an impact is made that shows people who God is and the path towards the light God shines. History repeats itself. In the Bible, something called the remnant, that's what it's called, the remnant is a recurring theme throughout the Bible. Theologians describe a remnant as is what is left of a community after it undergoes a catastrophe. That means a deep, significant change that that it's just overwhelming. Those who follow Christ often find themselves as strangers within their own lands. You see, in the Bible, Peter spoke of this. If we look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11, the scripture says, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts, which wage war against the soul. And that's in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. God's remnant are those who acknowledge God in all their ways, even when their ways sometimes do not please God. This is the world of sin we are born in. True Christians confess their sins to God while believing he is always faithful and just to forgive them of their sins and to cleanse them from all of their unrighteousness. We're always going through a cleansing when we lean towards God. See, the remnant church is a visible, historical, organized body characterized by obedience to the commandments of God and the possession of a unique end-time gospel proclamation. I'm going to say that again. The remnant church is a visible, historical, organized body characterized by obedience to the commandments of God and the possession of a unique end-time gospel proclamation. The idea is the church stays the course and keeps the faith. In the Old Testament of the Bible, we learn that the prophet Isaiah found himself describing a remnant of people who remained faithful to the Lord among a larger community that did not even identify themselves as Jewish. This is the Old Testament. It is amazing that a small group of people can achieve a lot when their hearts are invested in a matter and they set about it with a dedication and enthusiasm. It is part of the human equation. I'll give you an example. Mighty political parties 
and political action committees called PACs have come into being because of their dedication of a few fanatics. Christianity became so prominent as a result of 12 disciples. That's it, 12 disciples who carried out Jesus's command to go into the world and spread the gospel, to spread the Lord's message. Through the Bible, we see that God carried out his salvation plan by means of small groups of people. You can be part of that. You can be part of that through your church. Volunteer. Be part of something. Now check this out. Here's another example. When Noah and his family built the ark, God made the truth of his existence known to that only one family. Here's another one. When Jacob sent his sons to Egypt in search of grain, God again used one small community. God called a few believers to maintain the faith. You see, small is better. More is too much or not necessary. That's where confusion is. Use what works. Don't let it be a struggle. It is the same in faith. If you start small in faith, you will receive more. If our faith, even if it's the size of a mustard seed, is placed in an all-powerful God, great things can happen. That's our God. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20 says, he replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And that's in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Now let's look at a story in the Bible from the Old Testament as seen in the book of Isaiah. You see, Isaiah was a great prophet. After the judgment over Assyria was carried out, there was a small remnant that would return to God in remorse. This is repentance. The story is from Isaiah chapter 10. Chapter 10 of Isaiah tells of the Lord's judgment upon the Assyrians. In verse 12, God says, I will punish the king of Assyria for the willful pride of his heart and the haughty look in his eyes. He continues in verses 17 through 18. The light of Israel will become a fire, their holy one a flame. In a single day, it will burn and consume his thorns and his briars. The splendor of his force and fertile fields I will completely destroy as when a sick man wastes away. God then relates how his people will turn back to him as a result of this tremendous display of strength. His utter destruction of most of Assyria. In that day of the remnant of Israel, the survivals of the house of Jacob will no longer rely on him who struck them down, but will truly rely on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. A remnant will return, a remnant of Jacob will return to the mighty of of God. And that's Isaiah chapter 10, verse 20 through 21. He goes on to assure the remaining Israelites that they need not fear the Assyrians, for soon he will destroy them. The Christian community is usually a faithful remnant that is pushed aside by non-believers or uh, backsliders of faith. You see, we can remain true to the Christian faith in spite of the opposition. The body of the church lives on. Good is more powerful than bad. But at times it may seem to be on the brink of extinction. It may feel that way. In some groups, it is brought back to life and revival brings in new hope and trust. Be part of it at your church. Sometimes the community itself is guilty of confusing the faith with others for and the systems that are put forth. Then God sends a prophet or evangelist to call them back to their true calling. Are you one of the faithful remnants? Don't be discouraged. Don't be pushed aside by this mass unbelief, this failure of godliness around you. Continue with your faith in Jesus. Don't be discouraged. Have confidence in God's promises. I pray that the backsliding reverses and turns into climbing towards the light that God has shown upon your life. May you be blessed. From the Resurrection Center, my name is Dave.